Hey there, Ry the Car Guy here, and I want to talk about why someone in their 30s might want to consider a Chrysler 300 when they're purchasing their next car. As you may or may not know, the sedan is dying, and full-size sedans are the ones that are going first. It's a very unfortunate thing, but people my age and younger are really leaning towards uh, SUVs and crossovers. Why is that though? These cars are spacious, they're capable, and they're becoming affordable because for whatever reason, people are not buying them. So we're gonna explore that today. I wanna show you why a Chrysler 300 might be a great choice for you and your family. Let's start with the looks. The Chrysler 300 has a pretty good style. I would call it sort of timeless or classic. It has great lines and a pretty good stance. You can get a model like this where you still have sort of the, the chrome accents, things like the mirror or the door handles, and even some little trim around the front in the grill and in the rear on the bumper. Or you can get the S model where they wipe out all the chrome, so it's kind of up to you what style you wanna go for. The car's wide and sits relatively low, so it's easy to get in and out of, and the doors open nice and wide as well. The front and rear end both have pretty stout but still angular designs, definitely not uh, overly busy with simple lines. Now I know this car is popular with the quote older generation, but it still has a lot of nice features and up-to-date tech that offers a lot of value to someone who's purchasing a car in 2020. The 300 comes with a couple power plants. You can get, of course, the Hemi V8, and you can get a 3.6 liter V6. I've actually owned three 300s, this is my third one, and I've owned two of the Hemis and one, this one in the V6. Both of these options are pretty tried and true. The 5.7 liter Hemi's been around for quite a long time, has proven itself to be pretty darn reliable, as well as the Pentastar. And the Pentastar, which is in this right now, the 3.6 liter, has been around for quite a while and is in an absolute ton of Chrysler vehicles. Both of these engines don't have any large widespread issues, and even the V6 does offer pretty decent gas mileage considering the size of the vehicle. The width comes in at around 75 inches, and the total length is around 200, making plenty of space for uh, seating room in the front and the rear, and of course, a pretty spacious trunk in the very back. Now, one of the greatest things about the Chrysler 300 has to be its value for dollar. Now, this car, uh, I still happen to have its window sticker, so I'll show you that now. The model I have is nearly maxed out. There's a couple things that it didn't have. Of course, going from the six cylinder up to the Hemi would be a pretty substantial bump, as well as a few small luxury options on the interior, such as the rear sunshade or the heated and cooled cup holders, which I added separately after the fact. Other than that, it has just about everything, and you'll see that it's just under $45,000. Now, that is in fact a lot of money. However, I didn't buy this new. And these types of cars, especially sedans that are kind of going, going the way of the dodo, if you will, are dropping in value and they drop in value fast. So this video certainly isn't intended to recommend you go out and buy a new one. However, what I paid for this is absolutely a great value. This car was one owner. It was less than a year old and had about 13,000 miles on it. And I paid $27,000 for it. Given the options, its size and its capability, that kind of money is pretty great. On top of all that, this was also certified by Chrysler, so I have a pretty great warranty to go along with that price. So all that is great, but what about how it drives? Honestly, that's pretty excellent as well. Now, like I said, I've had the V6 version of this and I've had the V8, and honestly, um, I kind of like the V6 a little bit better. Now, I know that's kind of sacrilegious, but it, uh, I have to say, the V6 just feels a little bit more nimble, feels a little more kind of sportier, if you will. Now keep in mind, the ones that I've had that were V8s are the 2011 and the 2012, so those are a lot older, so they could have changed the driving dynamics. I'm not exactly sure what they did between 2012 and 2018, but I know they did go through a bit of a refresh, and in that could have been improvements to the drivability. I will say, though, it offers a really smooth ride, uh, it has power when you need it, when you want it, but when you don't and you're just cruising, it stays nice and quiet going down the road and you're just kind of able to relax and enjoy all the luxuries of the interior of the car. And when it comes to driving, it does offer all kinds of safety features. So things from lane departure warning to lane departure uh, assistance, if you will, it will actually turn the steering wheel while you're going down the road if you start to veer out of your lane. It also has 
adaptive cruise control that will slow down and speed up with the cars in front of you, crash avoidance system that will apply the brakes if you're coming up on things too fast. And on the luxury side of things, you have of course your leather and vinyl seats, uh, power, obviously power on both sides, heated and ventilated seats in the front, heated, heated seats in the rear, heated steering wheel. Of course you have your auto dimming rear view mirror, your side mirrors are defrost, they go down when you go in reverse, a large panoramic roof that brightens up the cabin, a fun analog clock on your dash, all of that just kind of adding to that classic luxury full-size sedan feel. On the technology side of things, you of course get the standard host of tech features, things like satellite radio and HD radio. But uh, with the Uconnect system, you also receive things like Sirius XM Guardian and Sirius XM Travel Link. With Sirius XM Guardian, you get things like being able to find your car wherever it's at from your cell phone, locking and unlocking and remote starting from your cell phone. And with Sirius XM Travel Link, you get to check things like fuel prices or the weather. You get to even see like a little radar map right on your big touch screen in your dash. You get things like traffic alerts, uh, sports scores, all kinds of things, all without having to pull out your cell phone. So it's spacious, attractive, powerful, and comes with all of the necessary tech that you would expect out of a modern day vehicle. All of that is wrapped up in a package that's about as expensive as a bare bones Hyundai Santa Fe with a warranty to match. So why would someone in their 30s want to purchase a Chrysler 300? I think a better question is why wouldn't they? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.